This is your no-nonsense ultimate guide to the DMZ, including everything you need to know, really, from getting 20k XP per game, to understanding the loadouts and contraband system, to unlocking secret new weapons that are exclusive to the mode, and finding all the secret stuff hidden away in all those locked areas. There are timestamps in the description so you can skip around to the chapters that are useful for you, and if you do find it useful, please subscribe. One of the first things you'll see when you load up the mode is the faction missions option, so let's take a look at that now. To begin with, you'll have three available missions here. Those are the ones on the left hand side. And you'll have one locked mission called Storm the Stronghold. All of these are under the Legion faction umbrella, and there are two other factions, White Lotus and Black Mouse. But we don't really need to worry about the factions too much, they're essentially just different lists of missions. So let's just focus on the first one that's unlocked, that's Legion, for the time being. When you select a mission, you'll be able to see its rewards and any specific details about what the task is that you need to complete, and you need to bear in mind that you can only select three missions max at a time, and once you complete a mission, you still need to deselect it before you can select a new mission. If you want to skip forward to the part of the video where I walk through these missions in game, then there's a YouTube chapter link that you can follow in the description. But for now, there's another thing in the menus which we need to talk about before we deploy. If you click over to the weapons tab, you'll see that at the bottom, you've got your loadout that you'll spawn in with. In the middle, you've got your backpack, and at the top, you've got what's on your soldier. To begin with, all these slots will be pretty much empty, but the game does give you a selection of contraband weapons that you can use in your loadout to spawn in with. These are indicated by this red bar that says contraband, and what that means is that they've technically been extracted from the DMZ. So they might have been found in the world somewhere, they might have been stolen from an enemy that you've killed, or they might have been stolen from an AI that you've killed. Their attachments will be fixed, Next, they'll just be as they are. You can't modify the weapon. And the key to DMZ is if you die, and by die, I mean if your squad wipes and you leave your corpse behind inside the DMZ, then you do not get to keep your contraband weapon. That particular one that you were using is gone. Now, you can still use that gun in multiplayer and in Warzone, etc. You don't need to worry about things kind of having contagion effects and spilling over into the other modes in that way. But if there was a really cool, special, unique variant that you found in the DMZ and that you'd been using, but then your squad got wiped and you left it behind, then sorry, the gun's gone. There is one way to push back against this feature though, and that's the insured slot. When you're selecting your loadout, you'll see these slots above your contraband stash. And the way these work is you choose a weapon from the list of weapons that you've unlocked in the game. So we're not just talking contraband here, but the stuff that's available to you in MP that you've got from leveling up, etc. You choose one of those guns, and then just above where you choose the gun, you can go to the gunsmith for it and customize it to your liking. Then if you want to bring this into the DMZ with you, then you just select that weapon instead of anything from your contraband stash. And what this this will mean is if you wipe, if your squad takes an L in the DMZ, you don't just leave the weapon behind permanently like you would with a contraband weapon, but instead a timer is started and you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can use that same weapon all over again. So you do get access to it back, it just takes a little while. But thankfully, if the timer says two hours, you don't actually have to wait two hours. By extracting cash from the DMZ, you can bring the timer down. So you might have a two hour timer, just play a couple of matches with some of your other contraband weapons instead of this insured weapon. So you end up opening that insured slot back up after like 45 minutes. Now, remember I said that there were other factions, White Lotus and Black Mouse. The main benefit of getting through all of those extra faction challenges, other than the individual rewards, is that doing those faction challenges will open up insurance slots two and three. Anyway, moving on from weapons, there's other parts of your loadout that we need to consider. For tacticals, lethals, and field upgrades, you're free to choose whatever you want from what you've got unlocked. You're able to reselect these with no timer consequences every single time you load in, so you don't need to think like, oh no, did I die with a stun grenade before? Now I'm not going to be able to use it. It doesn't work like that. These are just open access. Now the rest of the stuff on the screen is all stuff that you're going to to bring back with you from doing DMZ runs. So if you jump in and you complete an exfil and you've got a two-plate armor vest, you'll now have a two-plate armor vest for your future runs in the top left-hand corner of the screen there. However, if you die in another run with that two-plate armor vest, 
you'll be reset back to a single play armor vest. Similarly, if you pick up a kill streak but you don't use it and then you exfil, you'll have the kill streak on your soldier in this screen. But if in your next run you use the kill streak, then you won't have the kill streak again once you get back to this screen. There are actually also plenty of tacticals, lethals, and field upgrades that you can only get from the world as well. You can't select them in the menu, but they are available. So keep your eye out for those too. Things, for example, like a revive pistol. Really, really useful. Finally, the key stash is in the backpack, as you can see here. And you'll find these keys when you're exploring the world, taking down enemies, etc. And specific keys open specific locked doors. They usually have a location on them. And the places or things that they open up tend to have better loot, or maybe they've got rare stuff in them, etc. You can choose whether or not you want to save your keys, just leave them in your stash, or bring them in with you on a run. But bear in mind, they do take up backpack space. And if your squad wipes, you lose your keys, which can be quite frustrating. So if you're bringing keys along with you, I recommend you only bring one or maybe two per run. Because realistically, you're only going to have time to use one or maybe two in a given run. And there's no point risking losing all your other keys if your squad gets wiped. So with your loadout locked in, your missions selected, don't forget that, and your squad assembled, you're now ready to jump into the game. When you do that, you'll be spawned in a random area on the outside of the circle. And you don't need to worry about the circle closing on you on this one because it works a bit differently. Instead, there's a 25 minute timer, and after 25 minutes, this radiation circle is going to start expanding to cover the entire map. As it expands, it's going to get rid of the three locations that you can exfil from, which are indicated by this little blue man running into a doorway. This means that if you want to exfil successfully, you're going to want to do it before the 25 minute mark, or once it hits 25 minutes, you're just going to want to be speedy and get there before the radiation expands to that point of the map. If you're too slow, don't worry, there will be one final exfil point that opens up, but again, you've got to be damn quick at that point. So, what else have you got on the map? Well, these little green phones are contracts, and these can be picked up to earn cash and XP and rewards, and they all work slightly differently. So, I'm going to quickly run through those now. One is destroy supplies, which is a little bomb icon, and that's just going to need you to blow up two separate locations and you'll get a bunch of money from it. Another is a hostage rescue, and you have a timer when that's going on. It can be quite stressful, so bear that in mind before you start it. There's an elimination one, which is a crosshair, and you just have to assassinate some kind of AI who's guarded by multiple enemy AIs. There's a secure intel and a Geiger search one, where you have to basically find hard drives or find uranium rods, and then you might need to upload the information at a nearby radio tower. And there's a cargo delivery or shipment one, depending on if you're in a boat or not. And that's just going to require you to drop off cargo at a marked location. There's loads of them, and it's worth experimenting with which ones you like and which ones you don't. You might find that certain ones are actually much better than others for achieving your goals. So for example, I know that the radiation one is amazing for getting cash. So if you're trying to extract with loads of cash so you can reset your cooldown on your insured weapon slot, then that would be a great objective for you to do. There are also hunt squad contracts, which mean that you can hunt an enemy team, but watch out because it can also happen in reverse, obviously, and you can be hunted. And if you are, it'll notify you on the side of your screen and there'll be a proximity marker to show you how close to you that other squad is. Now, those aren't the only times that you're going to see a squad marked on your map and things like that. There are various other objectives that are also going to notify other players. So, for example, you have these UAV towers, and if you secure one of those, then it's going to give you a UAV in that area, which is really useful. But if an enemy secures it, you're going to see that it's been secured on your map, and you'll know that they're there. The same applies for the SAM turrets that are around the map. You can activate those, capture them, and then they'll shoot down enemy planes, helicopters, etc. in that area. And so that's really useful. But by activating it, you'll first of all set off an alarm and you'll also alert other players that you're the one that's taking control of it. This alerting other squads feature also applies in two other key areas. One is with strongholds. So let's talk about how those work. Strongholds are essentially high value areas. So you'll need a stronghold key card in order to access them and the loot inside is much more valuable. There are two ways to get a stronghold key so you can begin these mini objectives. One is by buying one in the buy station for $5,000 and the other is just from killing enemies. It doesn't necessarily need to be near a stronghold but generic enemies can often drop blue glowing stronghold keys 
key cards, and you can either sell those or use them to start a stronghold. When you use one of those key cards on a stronghold door and begin the activity, it will alert other players to the fact that you're doing it. So be wary of being third partied while you fight through this stronger AI. Make sure you loot all the boxes that you can find there because there's really good weapons in those crates often. And you'll also find things like tier three armor vests, score streaks, etc. Another in-game event that I want to point out is the weapon case. This is marked with this icon on the map and it will be somewhere in an area, but you won't have a specific location for it. And the reason for that is you're going to need to take down a high value target in order to pick the case up. It might be a juggernaut that will be really tanky or something similar. And once it's dead, you'll be able to grab the weapon case and put it in your inventory. Now, it doesn't just give you a weapon straight away. It actually just acts as a kind of GPS signal to other players in the game that you're transporting the case around the map. So you will be hunted if you have this, be careful. But if you're able to successfully extract with it, there's an entire separate rewards tree full of fun things that you can unlock, but that can be only accessed through getting the case. It's the sort of activity that I'd say is a good idea to do if you're already planning to extract and you're already feeling strong, because it basically is just going to give you some extra bonus rewards once you're out. There are other random events that can happen too, including a dust storm that can spawn in and change certain areas of the map, and an enemy attack helo that you'll sometimes get a radio announcement about, and it'll be indicated by a little skull that starts roaming around the map. If you take that chopper down, it's going to drop a supply crate for you, and inside you'll get a bunch of high value loot. There are also supply crates that can just fly around the map in general. They'll be dropped by supply planes, and you can actually shoot down those supply planes using SAM turrets and get further access to supply drops that way. So there's clearly heaps of stuff to do. How exactly do you get around? Well, there's vehicles all over the map. You can see them on your mini map. And unlike previous Call of Duties, they can run out of gas. So you need to keep an eye on your gas meter at the bottom of your screen. And if you start getting low, head to a nearby gas station. And the same applies for boats as well. They have specific boat refill stations. At those stations, you're also going to to be able to repair the vehicle. So if it's taken damage for whatever reason, it will get repaired while the gas is refilling. However, it will pause the gas refill and the repairs if there are enemies in the nearby area. So you'll need to clear out the gas station and then you'll be able to get your repair finished. On top of those vehicles, there's also zip lines, repels, things like that around the map. And there's a train that circles around, which actually has quite a lot of good loot on it. And it's just an easy way to get from point A to point B. So I mentioned at the beginning, the faction missions, and I'm gonna quickly walk you through those now, just to make it really easy to get going with DMZ. The first three missions are really easy. Just ping a contract phone on your minimap and then go and hold square to interact with it, activate a UAV tower, and loot a bunch of stuff. That's it. Once you've done those three, remember to deselect them in the menu and then load into another game with Storm the Stronghold active. For this, you need a stronghold keycard. So like I said before, you can either buy one or just kill enemies until you get a random stronghold keycard drop. Then go to a nearby stronghold indicated by this icon on the minimap and clear it out. But while you're doing that, be very, very attentive to what the AI that you're killing are dropping. One of them will drop a white Lotus Intel. So keep a close eye out. And once one of those gets dropped, pick it up and then go and exfil. You'll have completed Storm the Stronghold if you do that successfully. By the way, if you can't find the white Lotus Intel, just do another Stronghold. But once you've successfully exfilled with it, you'll be able to go to the white Lotus tab on the faction missions. And there'll be a stack of new missions there. And you'll have unlocked tier two on Legion's missions. Now, all this probably sounds great, but while you're going around the world, you're looting, you're doing these missions, you're getting rewards and stuff, you're going to end up with a pretty full backpack. But there is a way to make life a bit easier, and that's to find a larger backpack. There's a medium and a large, and the large backpack actually has a weapon slot inside it, so you can extract with an extra weapon, rather than being forced to hold two weapons and extract both of those, but nothing else. This will also be really useful when you start encountering other enemy players. So something that they've added in DMZ is the ability to steal another player's dog tags. If you kill an enemy player and loot their body, on the left-hand side, you'll be able to grab their dog tags and put them in your backpack. And you can then either extract with them and claim them as your own, or you can go to a buy station and sell them. They're pretty valuable, so it's a decent idea to pick them up, but it will alert enemy players to the fact that you have their tags. Now then, buy stations. We haven't talked about those much yet. This is what they look like. As you can see, you can sell valuable items, and that's just scraps that you'll find around the map. So maybe you find a light bulb, maybe you find a comic book. Those can all be sold for money. Some things are worth a lot more. So if you find a laptop, that'll be worth about 1500 bucks. If you find a watch, 800 bucks. An encrypted hard drive, five grand. A gold bar, eight grand. And uranium, 10 grand. So clearly it's worth holding on to these things so 
that you can sell them when you get the chance. And with that money, what can you do? Well, you can buy this little variety of things, although it's very expensive. It's 35k to get a tier 3 armor vest. Or you can spend money on loadouts. There are a selection of different weapons at different buy stations, and those can all be purchased. And then if you extract with them, you can use them in future games. Now, this is a cool feature of DMZ. If you don't have a weapon unlocked, let's say you haven't unlocked a certain sniper, and then you extract with it, you'll actually unlock it in multiplayer as well. So you'll have access to it from that point on. And this is one of the ways that you can unlock the exclusive M13B assault rifle, which is only accessible via DMZ. If you find one in the world, you just extract with it and you'll have unlocked it to use in multiplayer in Warzone. However, on top of that, there's also a quest in DMZ, which will allow you to unlock it. You're looking for this radiation symbol on the map and inside it, there'll be a guy called the chemist. You need to enter the radiation zone and probably first things first, First, find yourself a gas mask. They're dropped by any enemy AI that are inside the radiation zone. So just kill an enemy or two, grab a gas mask, and then turn your focus to the chemist, a yellow AI in the center of the area. He's a bit tanky, but if you take him down, he'll drop an M13B. So it's a guaranteed spawn. And then you can just exfil with it and you'll have unlocked the weapon for multiplayer and war zone use. So let's move on now to some more expert secrets that you might not be aware of. First, there are fixed spawn high value loot caches dotted around the map. This is an example of one. And so if you're ever exfilling in this area, for example, you know that you can quickly run over here behind this rock, loot it, and then make out with some really easy loot. Number two, certain contracts have shared completion across your squad. So let's take Legion's frame job mission, for example, where you have to buy an LTV with a turret at a shop, then use it to kill 10 enemies in Akdar village and then destroy it in the Mawazem marsh. If you're in a squad with someone and using a buy station with someone at the same time that they're buying their LTV and then you're driving it while while they're using the turret and then you help them destroy it, you can both complete this in the same match. You don't need to buy two separate LTVs or anything. So keep this in mind when you're doing other contracts with friends as well, just to see if you can both complete together. Number three, you can also extend this to your stash. If you've got friends that you play with regularly, but your key stash is full and theirs isn't, let them take the keys and hold those keys so that they aren't just going to waste. You can drop keys just like you can drop any other item or weapon. And that applies to cash too. So if your friend's a couple of bucks short for something they want to buy, you can help them out. Number four, when you extract, if there's some random scrap items that aren't useful, but they're worth money that you have in your inventory, those will be automatically converted to money once you finish your exfil. So you don't need to run all the way to a buy station and sell your stuff and then exfil. You can just exfil and it'll do it automatically. Okay, let's talk about getting 20k XP per game. I've taken a look at the different XP rewards that you get for different activities, and I'm going to quickly run through some info on that now and then give you some recommendations. AI kills give you 100 XP XP per kill. Doors unlocked give you 250. So do UAV towers, supply drop openings, those sorts of things. If you extract, you'll get 2.5k XP. You also get 250 for every point of interest that you visit. And if you exfil in a match with, let's say, 20 grand, that's going to convert to 2000 XP. It divides by 10. Roughly speaking, that would also knock off about 30 minutes of insured weapon time if you had a cooldown active. Opening loot containers gets you a little XP, but it's hardly any. Operator kills will give you 100 XP each. Bosses will give you 500 XP and missions vary, but they can give you five to 10,000 XP each. So you complete a mission in a game and you grind out as many AI kills as possible. That's my recommendation to get the most possible XP. And then you also obviously make sure you exfil at the end with some cash on you. That's going to mean that you end up with like 20k XP or more. This is why I think you should always be working towards missions in this game. And I mean, you can do multiple missions in a single match. So if it was really optimized, you could get like 30k XP in a match. It's a pretty crazy way to level up fast. And I also recommend getting AI kills because that's going to give you weapon XP too. So you're getting the best of both worlds there. Now I've seen a lot of people saying, that's all great, but what is the point of DMZ? Like, where is it going? And the simple answer is that it's going to grow a lot over the next year. Right now, you've got your mission trees, which are going to allow you to unlock certain specific blueprints that you can't get anywhere else. And it's great for leveling weapons and just grinding out XP for your rank. But there isn't an external economy yet. If they add one, it'll obviously add to this video and make new videos, etc. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. But right now, the economy is pretty much internal to the game. So it's fairly limited. But with random limited time events that are going be popping up in the next couple of weeks and months. And with the further complexity that crafting is going to bring to the game once we get raids in a few months too, the DMZ is only going to continue to expand. And so it's something that I think it will be really valuable to be leveled up in. If you're really lost and you don't want to do any of the optional objectives, maybe just try and take down as many players as you can. Do things that are going to draw attention to you. Activate all the UAV towers. Chase down people doing weapon caches. Become a 
bandit of Al Nazra. And then once you've done that, recognize the fact that, oh, you've got five people's dog tags in your inventory and you want to save those? Well, you'd better exfil and now you're wrapped up in the loop of playing DMZ. That said, if there are things that I missed or you have more questions, let me know and I can make more videos on those topics.